What causes psychosis? Is it biological, environmental? Can it be induced later on in life? I'm Mike, your pharmacist, and today on The Daily Dose, we will talk about what causes psychotic symptoms. So what causes psychosis? Well, we're not entirely sure. It's hard to notice or test the symptoms of psychosis in animals or rats. It seems like psychotic symptoms are unique to humans. However, we do know the following two factors contribute to psychotic symptoms. Point one, the anatomy of the schizophrenic brain is different. And two, neurotransmitter dysfunction in the brain. Now, first and foremost, anatomic abnormalities. According to brain imaging tests, there are clear anatomical abnormalities in a schizophrenic brain. Unfortunately, these images can't be used to diagnose schizophrenia. It's just not that simple. So what we use is the DSM-5 criteria to diagnose schizophrenia. This is essentially a clinical interview and patient observation. It can be argued that this whole process is subjective in its nature. Now, the anatomy of a schizophrenic brain is different than the average person. The brain actually looks different. To illustrate this point, please look at this image. This image shows the brain of 28-year-old twins. The left depicts the average brain, and the right depicts a schizophrenic brain. This image highlights another two points. The brain has measurable, structural, and functional abnormalities. In the left image, the ventricles are clearly larger, meaning it puts pressure on other parts of the brain, decreasing brain volume in areas such as the hippocampus. This is the part of the brain that is responsible for regulating emotions and memory. In this image, the hippocampus is actually smaller. The structural change in the brain can explain some of the cognitive symptoms in schizophrenia. Now, the second thing we learn is, since this is an image this image is a depiction of twins, we know that schizophrenia is not purely a genetic disorder. Other biological or environmental factors have to play a role as well. Now that we are done talking about the anatomic abnormalities, let us talk about neurotransmitter abnormalities. A very important concept in neurobiology is that the body is all about balance or homeostasis. For example, we will learn that too much or too little of one hormone or neurotransmitter can cause two opposing conditions. For example, too much sugar in the blood causes hyperglycemia, which can lead to diabetes. The opposite condition is too little sugar in the blood causes hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. Another example is if your thyroid is overly stimulated, you tend to feel more anxious and hot a condition called hyperthyroidism. Now the opposite, when there is low levels of thyroid hormone, you feel cold and down, a condition called hypothyroidism. But what's the opposite of hallucinations or delusions? What's the opposite of positive symptoms in schizophrenia? Positive symptoms seem to have no normal counterpart in the average brain. That is why understanding psychosis is so interesting. We will begin the discussion on neurotransmitter abnormalities by discussing dopamine. Why dopamine? Well, the first antipsychotic medications that were ever introduced to the market worked by blocking the effects of dopamine and this really helped with positive symptoms. So this suggests that schizophrenia is caused by increased levels of dopamine in the brain. To explain the role of dopamine in schizophrenia, I will compare it to Parkinson's disease. The reason I'm using this example is because dopamine is present in excess in certain parts of the brain in schizophrenia. Now in Parkinson's, dopamine is actually depleted. Drugs that we use in schizophrenia that block dopamine can cause Parkinson's-like symptoms. Similarly, drugs that increase or stimulate dopamine, like marijuana, amphetamines, cocaine, they can induce psychosis or what is widely known as a bad trip by recreational drug users. So yes, drugs can cause psychosis. Even marijuana can lead to psychotic symptoms and the more consistent use can further increase that risk. So it's very important to know the risks before ingesting anything. Now, dopamine is not the only neurotransmitter involved. Medications that regulate dopamine firing are far from perfect. They don't work for everyone and affect different symptoms in different people. Clozapine is arguably one of the most effective antipsychotics on the market. It's reserved for people who are resistant to all other treatments. And this drug has very weak antagonizing effects of dopamine. So this suggests that neuroepinephrine, serotonin, GABA, and other neurotransmitters are undoubtedly involved. So exactly where in the brain and how can we explain positive and negative symptoms? Let's start with positive symptoms. Positive symptoms like hallucinations and delusions, they're caused by excessive dopamine firing in the mesolimbic pathway. The mesolimbic pathway is essentially a string of neurons that travel from the ventral tegmental area or VTA to the nucleus accumbens. 
The mesolimbic pathway is also known as the reward pathway. It regulates motivation, reinforcement learning, and fear, among other cognitive processes. When someone uses addictive drugs, dopamine neurons in the VTA are activated. These neurons project to the nucleus accumbens via the mesolimbic pathway, leading to an increased level of dopamine in the nucleus accumbens. This is what leads to this elevated sensory state or, or feeling high. Too much dopamine in this pathway is what is believed to lead to psychotic symptoms or positive symptoms in schizophrenia. Now, what causes negative symptoms? Low dopamine firing in the mesocortical system. The mesocortical system is comprised of neurons that extend from the VTA to the cerebral cortex. But unlike the mesolimbic system, which sees excessive dopamine, low dopamine firing in the mesocortical pathway causes negative symptoms. The mesocortical system is thought to control emotions and cognitive functioning. Now a depletion of dopamine in this part of the brain is believed to cause the flat affect, low levels of facial expression and decreased motivation levels. So in the mesolimbic system, there is too much dopamine and in the mesocortical, there is not enough dopamine. The brain is such a highly intricate biological system and in balance in certain parts of the brain can lead to serious illness. These conditions are generally brought on by biological or environmental factors, things we have no control over. However, ingesting chemicals that can dysregulate neurotransmitter function can have similar effects, and in some cases the damages can be irreversible. So educate yourself on the risk before ingesting anything. Thank you for joining me on The Daily Dose. If you learned something today, please leave me a like, comment, or subscribe.